The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> the apostles rejoined Jesus and told him all they had done and taught. Then he said to them, You must come away to some lonely place all by yourselves and rest for a while. For there were so many coming and going that the apostles had no time even to eat. So they went off in a boat to a lonely place where they could be by themselves. But people saw them going, and many could guess where. And from every town they all hurried to the place on foot and reached it before them. So as he stepped ashore, he saw a large crowd and he took pity on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he set himself to teach them at some length. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Very good morning to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. So today the theme for our Mass is the Good Shepherd, right? Now sometime in Easter we also celebrated the Good Shepherd Sunday, right? Now today again we revisit this theme as we read this beautiful Gospel where we see how Jesus has a most compassionate heart and how even though he is tired, he still ministers to the people. So what actually happened? Last week, we were told how the apostles who had been sent out two by two, right? And they had been sent on the mission. They were told, you know, they were not to bring anything except the staff, right? And of course, as you all know, they had a companion, each of them. So they didn't go alone, but they went two by two. So that was last week's gospel. And in today's gospel, we see the apostles returning from the mission. And yes, they are very tired. And as the gospel today tells us, they didn't even have time to eat. That's how busy they were. So they were tired. They were also hungry. Now the same also with Jesus. He was also tired and he was hungry. So again, uh, let us not think, oh, Jesus is also full, fully divine, therefore oh, he's like a superman. <laughs> no, don't have this wrong idea in our mind. Jesus is also tired. He is also hungry. He also needs to rest. He also needs to eat. And more important than all of this, he needs some time to be alone. The apostles also. That's why he tells them, go to a lonely place. Let's go to a lonely place. Because he wants to be alone. Too much time with the people, with the crowds, listening to everybody's need, and talking about the kingdom of God, preaching the good news, seeing to everybody. It's very tiring. Yeah, More than walking on the journey, dealing with all the people, sometimes really, it can be so exhausting. And so this is what Jesus also is feeling. And he knows the apostles also are exhausted. Exhausted from too much contact with everybody. And so yes, they need some, what we call today, me time. Right? This very popular thing people like to say. And usually you will hear people who are very busy and they are really trying hard to find some time for themselves. They will be lamenting and saying, I need my me time also. I need some me time. I'm going crazy. Please have mercy on such people. Stop disturbing them. They really, they'll go crazy. Let them have some of this peace and quiet that they need. Unfortunately for Jesus, these people, they didn't leave them. They pursued them. And so, so sorry for Jesus and the apostles. No time to eat. No time to rest. No me time. Escape on the boat also. Couldn't escape. Still pursued, still caught. And... What to do? They have to postpone, postpone their rest, postpone their me time for another time. Okay? And Jesus does this because he knows the need of the people is so great. He sees them as sheep without a shepherd. Anyway, 
the people who are following Jesus, pursuing him, wanting him to preach to them the good news, but mostly to heal their sick ones and to cast out devils and all these things, they were also tired. They were also hungry. But their need was so great that they have to overcome that also and keep on chasing after Jesus who escaped in the boat. So imagine by boat, they should have reached faster, but the people, tired and hungry as they were, still they reached even faster. Because why? Their need was so great. And sometimes we'll find, even in our life, though how tired we are, when the need is so great, somehow we will find that hidden energy, hidden resources, extra effort, and we'll make it to do whatever is necessary. Yeah, I'm sure we would have experienced that also in our lives. So yes, Jesus also knows. They are also tired. They are also hungry. If I make them wait till the next morning, some of them might have passed, you know, passed out. You know, they may have fainted. Some maybe would have given up also and they would have gone home. Because no matter what, there is a limit to our strength. And most likely, everybody has already passed their limit. So Jesus, in his goodness of his heart, he understands their situation. And so this is a situation where everybody is also tired, everybody is also hungry, and yet there is work to be done. Hmm. You might find yourself in this kind of situation too at times. Only thing you can do is soldier on. What to do? Nothing you can do. And just depend on the very special grace that God will give you in that moment and know that you will overcome your tiredness. Okay, so Jesus truly is a good shepherd. He cares for the people. Now, each one of us here, we are called also to be a good shepherd in our own little way, in our own families, wherever we may be, whatever community we are taking care of. Myself, as a priest, also called to be a shepherd, yeah, in this parish, in this church, and so, yes, there will be times when we really have to go beyond what we would think are our limits, really even be tired and hungry, and yet continue serving our people, serving our loved ones, our families. And know that this is a good thing, a holy thing that we are doing, and it is what Jesus himself did. Yeah? However, after all that is said and done, still try your best to find your me time. You need it. Father also needs it. Try your best no matter what. Yeah? And don't just give up. Give up looking for that time to be alone, that time to rest and to recreate. Yeah? So it's important. Now I want to highlight something more important actually, and that is Jesus. He's not only looking for time to be alone, he is looking for time to be alone with his father. He is looking for time to be alone with God. So that's the importance of prayer in our life, our relationship with God. We need to sustain that. And yes, it is a legitimate need. We need it because without the grace of God, we can't do all that we have to do. We can't accomplish well the work that God has given to us. So important that me time should also be your God time. Ah, this is being a Christian. In the secular world, everywhere you will hear people talking about me time. But as Christians, we should talk about me and God time. So that also is important. We must not forget. Yeah? And you will find that the best me time you can have is with God. Truly, because he is the shepherd of your soul. Remember the psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. We had that in our responsorial psalm today. Truly, it is so wonderful to spend time with God. Now every Sunday we make time also to come to church. It's part of that me time actually. It's part of that me and God time. And yes, part also of our family time. Hear the baby crying. It's good. You know, there was a time, you know, the babies would be left at home and somebody would be taking care and then 
they take turns to come to Mass. Luckily today, even the babies come to church. It's their time also to be with God. It's okay, we hear them crying away. Not only should we be happy, we should praise God, for that is the sound of life. And it should not distract us. It should help us to think of God. Yeah? Okay. Hmm, baby got quiet now. Okay. <laughs> Too much attention still. I think I better keep quiet. Hmm. Okay. So, me time, God time, put this together. That is when you have what in English we call solitude. So, in our Christian way of speaking, there are these two words, loneliness and solitude. So for us who follow a Christian way of living, we use the word solitude in a more positive sense. So solitude is actually being alone with God. So when somebody says they are now looking for some time of solitude, it's not just to be alone for being alone, but being alone with God. Yeah, so that is solitude, at least in our Christian way of using the words. For mostly secular people, solitude and loneliness is the same thing, right? But for us, not so. So we differentiate. When we talk about, I'm feeling lonely, that's in a negative sense, you know? But when I want to be alone with God, that's when we talk about solitude. Okay, so this is something positive. All right, so remember, it's important, yes, to rest, important also to pray. And today, as we reflect upon Jesus, the Good Shepherd, we remind ourselves also of our vocation as shepherds, each one of us in our own little way. And what is the job of the shepherd, if not to take care of the sheep? And yes, you all have your sheep under you also. It may be your parents, it may be your children. Parents, when they are elderly, they become your sheep also. <laughs> Of course, the children naturally will think of them as sheep. And please don't think of sheep as being stupid. Huh? Don't treat anybody as though they are stupid. Don't treat people as though they are dumb sheep. No, we put the idea of sheep because sheep are very gentle. They are very beautiful. They are very cute. Not because they are dumb. Okay, so I know sometimes we think, oh, we are all just sheep. We think we are all dumb sheep. No. Okay. It means that we need someone to take care of us at times, yeah? And remember, you yourself are that sheep. Just as you are also the shepherd, sometimes you are also the sheep. So let's take care of each other. And remember, what does the shepherd do? The shepherd protects. What does the shepherd do? The shepherd keeps the unity. Now think of this for your family. If you are the head of the family, you are the shepherd. You have to protect your family. And you must keep them together. Now, the last thing I would like to leave with you, to highlight again the importance of prayer. Those days, the Redemptorist Fathers, you know, they used to go around preaching everywhere and they popularized this one particular saying, especially here in our local Malaysian church. The family that prays together stays together. Everybody knows this, as though it is written somewhere in the Bible. In Malaysian church, everyone knows this saying. The family that prays together stays together. Sometimes it doesn't turn out to be true. They pray together. After they say family rosary, they quarrel also God. <laughs> Human beings. Huh? But generally speaking, when we are united in our faith and as a family, we know how to spend time with God. That will build up our unity and build up our love and care for one another. Yeah? So this is important. So I hope in our families we are praying together. Even if we don't have time these days to pray the rosary together, because it takes about 20 minutes, and I know people are so hard-pressed for time these days, having to travel to Kuala Lumpur to work, traveling back late at night, where I got time to say rosary with the family? At least when you are having a meal together, just before you eat the meal, at least for that few seconds or so, you really bow your heads, close your eyes, put yourself in God's presence. Thank God for the food that is there before you and ask God to bless your family. That also is praying together. Surely, at least that we can do. And that is my sincere hope for all of us, that we will stick together as a family and love one another. Be truly shepherds to each other.